I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm a little bit embarrassed to make this video right now because I've been meaning to make a part two of this video I posted back in July. It's called how to get a brand deal. It's November right now, which means I've been delaying making a part two to this fucking video for the past three and a half months. And y'all have not given me a rest about it. I've gotten a lot of comments of people asking me, Jay, where the fuck is part two of how to get a brand deal? You literally left us on a fucking cliff. And uh, I was too embarrassed to give you guys the information I'm about to tell you right now. And it's the truth of what actually goes on with a brand deal and it's the reality of the mess of making money online. So to give you guys a quick recap, this is what happened. My friend Bella asked me to help her land a paid brand deal. Bella creates content on Instagram and she's created her own following and she wants to make some money working with brands so she can have a part-time job doing content creation, which is what she loves. Now, making money with brands is not a new concept. Huge YouTubers like Emma Chamberlain has made millions of dollars working for brands and has provided her opportunities to buy a house, make her own living online just by working with some brands. Bella asked me to help her because she knew that that my media agency, X8 Media, works with a ton of brands and we were able to help her maybe land her first paid project. The goal was to get her to a $1,000 brand sponsor for a single Instagram post. Now the issue was just finding that brand that wanted to do so. So we went about reaching to 50 brands. Bella emailed 50 brands to work with her and I gave her a specific script and strategy to land her the project. So that was the goal, getting one brand deal at $1,000 and let's just say that did not happen. We ended up recording a meeting right after after I gave her the strategies to figure out what went wrong. And this is what happened. Hi, Bella, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so just to recap, you last week sent 40 emails, 10 of them being DMs, 30 being actual emails. And you said to me, after, just off camera, that you got three responses. But let me tell you, Bella, I'll give you some hope. Like imagine three months from now, we do all this shit, and you're like, oh, it didn't work, right? But Fabletic saw your email three months ago, and your page grew in three months, right? And maybe it's holiday season, they're ready to spend money, right? And because they saw your email three months ago, your name is familiar, they know who to reach out to, right? So just remember that none of the work you do ever goes to waste because you'll be so surprised how it'll unravel in the future. Wow, that just like lifted my spirit. <laughs> three people responded, right? But didn't get the right response. How did you respond back? Because I, I want to hear that there's interest, but what, what happened next? Can you give me an example? One that was more like, not just, like two of them were like, oh, we don't have the budget right now, basically, but we can send you product and you can post about it or just have it like PR. But the one that I was able to like respond about with potential of it working out, like they said, oh, I'll get you to the right person. Like that's not my job. And so she said, let me know where you're located and I'll give the information to blah, blah, blah. And I said, thank you, I'm located in Austin. Like that's, per I just answered her question and then that was pretty much it. And then I never heard back from anybody else. Got it, so they were supposed to reach out and she didn't give you the contact. Yeah. So I will break down the two scenarios. We have one person that said they're interested but didn't follow up. And the second scenario is we have no money. I wanted to give you guys an easy schmeezy strategy to, you know, get a brand deal. But in truth, it didn't work that well. Wait, I know what it's like to work hard at something and just not get the results you want to see and how frustrating it can be. Whether it's you're studying for a test and you're expected to get an A, but you got a B minus, or you're working on getting a job and you just didn't land that interview. It's frustrating and nothing changes in the influencer marketing world. A lot of people think once you have followers, you're going to be able to make cash flow and everything is okay. And in honesty, that doesn't happen sometimes. But what I'm about to tell you guys is what you can do in the meantime before maybe you close that deal or you get your first breakthrough. I'm about to tell you guys how you can bounce back from problems like this of maybe not getting a response or getting rejected to closing the deal you want. Or if you just want to watch this video and you recently got rejected by your ex-boyfriend, you can also use some of these tips to just feel better about yourself because business and relationships are basically the same thing. And I'm speaking from personal experience, all right? All right, the first tip that I have is understand that it's completely normal. Like even my agency, big influencers with tens of millions of followers run into this issue, which is for every 100 brands you reach out to, five to 10 of them will only respond. Like this 5% to 10% conversion rate is completely normal. And then out of these, you know, five people that respond, some of them might not even be interested in working with you. They're just saying, you know, what's up? Tell me 
more information, but not really fully committing to a project with you. And we have to normalize success taking time. I've seen a lot of people just look at YouTubers and see how much money they made in a year and feel discouraged. You know, when it comes to my YouTube channel, I've been making content since I was nine years old. I didn't get paid a single dollar until I was 16, which is around seven years, because I can do math. <laughs> and sometimes you might work a little shorter or longer, but the point of it all is shit takes time. And my first advice, if you're feeling at all bad about the current state of your business is just chill the fuck out. It's gonna be okay. And it's completely normal not to get any response for a while. All right, number two, I recommend following up. When you email a brand, you're not the only one. Brands will scroll through their inbox like lightning speed just to get through their work. So your message might disappear, get lost, and might not even be opened. In order to prevent this, you want to follow up. Are you ready for my response, Bella? We're gonna take a disadvantage of not getting money into an advantage. Are you ready? Heck yes. I am way too caffeinated. So here's the truth. I'm gonna first talk about scenario number one, which is what do you do when someone says they're interested, but they don't follow up or you forget to follow up? What, what do you do? First of all, uh, Bella, typically, if you send 40 emails, 40 messages, you wanna send one more round of feedback or follow up regardless if they reply or not. I have a tool called Mail Tracker. I install to see if they open my email. The reason why that's important is because then you know who's the right person. It's a matter of fact if they're interested or not. Long story short, we're not doing that because it takes a little while, but if you send an email on a Monday, do a follow up on Wednesday. So you want to wait 48 hours to send a follow up. It's okay if you're late. You can actually send a follow up this week, one week later. It's okay. But typically in, in companies, in my company, we send actually, it's kind of embarrassing. We send five, five follow ups uh, that are 48 hours apart from each other. <laughs> Anyways, you don't have to do that because it's unnecessary. We have a team that does that 24 seven. You don't have to, but if you're, you would be good, Bella, you would actually increase from three responses out of 40 to six, I would say, if you just did one more round of follow-up. I'm going to insert this workflow right here that my company uses to reach out to brands. And you can see that sometimes we follow up three to four times with two days in between before we get any responses. So just use this to your advantage and I will link it below if you wanna see it in action. All right, number three, if a brand replies to you, you know, you follow steps one and two and you get a response, but it's not the response you're looking for. Maybe the brand doesn't wanna pay you, but they'll give you product. Option three is to take the deal. You know, if you're starting out influencer and you've never worked with a brand before it's okay to work for free you know I know a lot of people think it's controversial you want to be valued for your work but I remember my first brand deal it was this desk company I wanted to get paid but I only had you know a few thousand subscribers but they sent me a desk and made a really great video and in the future they approached me to work on another project this shit's normal you can work with brands for free and later they might turn into a paid customer especially if you're starting out and you have no experience this is a great alternative and you know there's a quote which is happiness is not about getting everything you want but being flexible and I don't want to settle for anything less than your worth but sometimes in the beginning gaining experience is going to cost you your integrity so working for free for a brand might not be a bad idea in the very beginning Bella you're gonna hear shocking advice shocking if you were the founder of that skincare company or that bikini company and an influencer was like hi this is my rates why would you say no like what would your be your first initial just guess you just don't want to spend money no 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 no, no, no. business they is about spending money, money they just don't see that if they spend money they'll get the return businesses have to spend money if you don't spend money you aren't a business it's all about what's your cost and what's your profit right that's that's how a business works they're not as afraid if they spend a thousand dollars with bella if they get two thousand dollars or not even two thousand if they get a thousand a hundred they're chilling with that that's literally it so you have to understand why are people saying no? I mean, there's a, a couple other things. I work with tons of brands and sometimes it's like, well, you aren't a good fit or it's like that, but typically it's financial. So this is what I would say, Bella. Say yes to free product with this exception. Tell the brand, give me an affiliate link or a link tracking. And if I drive X amount of sales, give me revenue share. So take product, negotiate basically rev share or performance base. Like if I sell these amount of units, you can pay me a flat out fee. Like basically negotiate on that. You can actually, if you're talking to my person, they'll be kind of open to it because it's, it's basically a code for them. It's like not a hard thing to track links. And you can ask them like, what would the performance be needed to be working on a longer term partnership? So essentially a sponsored fee. Say like if they say, if you sell, if you can bring a thousand people to the website, we'll pay you 500 bucks. And if you can prove that with that link track in the first time, the next time they see that result, they'll come back to you and pay you. And they will respect the fact that you're willing to take a risk. Now, the reason why I think it's important to do this not a lot of times is because the only way this works for Bella is if her audience trusts what she says, right? So if, if Bella's abusing it and is like driving links every day, 
then it won't work. So my recommendation about was once a month, you can do these free campaigns. Obviously you get your product, but you can actually build trust with the brand. I've done this before. I said yes to a brand and I was like, I will drive link signups. And then I've used that case study or example to other brands saying, if someone doesn't pay me, I can actually say, hey, I've worked with this company. This is the traffic we built. You can, uh, we can typically at XA, we build reports out of it, but you can just screenshot it, say, this is what I've built. I can do the same. The value is this cost. And then brands are very eye open because that's how you really build trust with a brand. I like that. <laughs> Do you want to see an example of what that looks like? Yeah. Well, you can't because that will be in part three of this episode. <laughs> On a real note, if you guys want to see a whole video about how to create case studies for brands, I will be happy to do that. Step number four is you can just find more brands. Sometimes you follow up with a brand five times, they don't respond. Maybe it's time to move on. I think, you know, this is where my dating advice can come in, but there's going to be more than one soulmate for you. Why do my videos literally always turn into relationship advice? But you know, I used to really like this boy in my life. He was such a great guy, but he just never texted me back. And uh, it really hurt. But I realized by dwelling and putting so much effort and energy of this guy who obviously doesn't want to work with me and love me. I could be putting that energy into someone else. So <laughs> that's why in brands, you should always keep your options open. You know, make sure that, you know, if you're working with 50 brands and you're talking to them, make another list of 50. So if you're struggling to find new brands to work with, here's a tip you can use to find similar people that you might be interested in it. You can go to Instagram, go on a brand that you like, hit follow, and then hit the drop down button. You can see similar accounts to that brand and you can add that to the list of brands you want to talk to. So literally you can rinse and repeat the strategy and you're gonna get a plethora of brands to work with because Instagram is finding all similar accounts to the brand that you just mentioned. All right, number five. This is the last thing you can do when it comes to closing your first brand deal. And it's a little bit more depressing. You know, I was asking my friend, Phil Jacobson, who is the VP at Hashtag Paid, one of the largest influencer marketing marketplaces. And I'm asking him, you know, what? do brands look for? And he says, you know, Jade, brands really look for not only, you know, growth and size of a creator, but the brand voice, the quality of their content, you know, how unique they are to the plethora of other creators. And I realized that a lot of us sometimes are maybe early to the game. Maybe you see this rejection to a brand that you reached out to as a horrible thing, but maybe you could see it as an opportunity to get better at your content. So my last advice is if you're struggling to work with a brand, or even if you're running your own business and you're struggling to make Make your first sale, what if you looked at this situation as an opportunity to focus on growing your own company, growing your own brand, maybe just not focusing on money for now, but making something amazing because sometimes it works out for the better. I have a quick story for you guys and I want to finish off this video with a very happy ending and it's this. Two months ago, my agency didn't have any new projects. We finished up a huge campaign for a client. It was a really big season this summer. And you know, September rolls around and we just didn't have any new clients. And I remembered kind of freaking out because I have a team, I have people to pay, I have, you know, lights to turn on. And I was really nervous because I was like, where the fuck are we gonna get revenue? And September rolls around and we don't have new projects, no new brands, and we're reaching out to a lot of people, but we didn't close anything new. And for three weeks, I didn't have much to do. And I was a little a bit worried, but I still focused on my content. I was still focused on putting out really good videos for you guys on this channel. And even though there's a lot of unknown, I just trust the process. Three weeks go by, hear nothing. Four weeks go by, I get an email. One of the largest companies in the world asks me to help lead an influencer marketing campaign for the US election. Yeah, that's right. What the fuck? You know, I was focused on building my own brand and content. This opportunity came and I was ready for it. And we ended up launching with this organization, something called the House of Us. And my company worked together on creating a TikTok house for the election to encourage people to vote. It was an amazing campaign. And I can't believe that happened. So the entire month of October, I was working on that and it's insane. It wasn't necessarily for the money that was important. It was more of just the fact that I trusted the process and was able to, I don't know, come out stronger out of being rejected and disappointed. Like I was so scared for that month of September that I was not gonna be able to continue. And I got landed this project and it was a success. We ended up gathering over a million views on this campaign for Biden Harris, which is a candidate in the US. And it was such a fulfilling piece of work. I've never thought I'd be 
able to do. And it's probably the best project I've ever worked on in my entire agency because I did not expect it. I focused it on myself and this opportunity came and that can happen to you. You know, I think a lot of us are trying to find answers of what we need of, you know, exact step-by-steps of how to grow online and make money. But in honesty, no one knows. You're going to have to be flexible, adapt. And that's why it's so important to love what you do. If you're a content creator and you're struggling to make this into a business, why don't you pause for a second and ask yourself, you know, this might take a lot of time. How can I make sure that I'm enjoying the process? How can I make sure that I might not get a brand deal till one or two years, right? Maybe I'm not going to get my break till three or four years or seven years like me. How can I enjoy the process, right? How can I love what I do so money doesn't matter? And that's why it's so, so, so important if you're a creator watching this video or you're a new business owner to find a way to enjoy the process, whether it's making content that you just love or working with someone in your business that just makes you so happy, you need to be able to start with passion first, then profit. Focus on yourself, focus on building the best you, and then the profit slash money will come. And you just have to have that faith and it's really cheesy as fuck, but focus on yourself, literally. Like a lot of people are too premature to getting a deal or to getting their first break. And we just have to be a little bit more patient. And trust me, it's always worth it. Okay guys, so the sun is literally setting down as we speak, so I'm going to end today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I talked a lot about focusing on growing your own brand and growing your own Instagram or YouTube or whatever first before getting that deal. Well, let me tell you, I have some good news. Next week, I have a very exciting announcement of something I've been working on for the past nine months. Yeah, that's right, longer than having a fucking kid, okay? I've been working on this project um, and it's launching next Tuesday. So if you wanna know more about how to grow on Instagram, you wanna get more mentorship and lessons, I have a very exciting announcement, but it launches next week. So make sure you guys subscribe and turn on the notification bell to get notified of that announcement. It's going to blow your mind. And if you've been someone that's been trying to start a business or grow online, you're gonna love this. I'm going to cry once it's out in the world, just because I've been working on it for so long and it's finally out next week so make sure you guys turn on the notification bell and shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you guys want to be the next comment winner comment below thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys like this video and the honest truth of it all life is fucking hard but you guys are stronger and i love you guys so much bye darmination